In this next chapter of my Odyssey across the Peloponnese in Greece, we come to the city known as Pylos. Keen students of the Iliad may already recognise this name, but if not, worry not, because I'll come to that shortly. It's a town on the sea, and although the water at sunrise was icy to say the least when I went for a swim there, I can personally attest to its serenity and beauty. A short drive from the city centre sees the shoreline open up into gorgeous lagoons on one side and the hills presenting panoramic vistas on the other. So settle in for a historic tour of this grand and ancient kingdom which flourished hugely in the Mycenaean age, played a pivotal role in the Peloponnesian War, and emerged through a great deal of conflict from the Middle Ages through to the 19th century to become the wonderful site it is today. Pylos lies in the far southwestern part of the Peloponnese, in the region of Mycenae. We drove around two hours from Olympia to get there, an incredibly pleasant trip almost entirely along the coast of the Ionian Sea. Although we know the site has been inhabited since around 6500 BCE in the Neolithic period, its history really begins in its Mycenaean period. Thousands of years of farming, fishing, and bronze making positioned it perfectly to emerge as one of the principal Mycenaean kingdoms by around 1600 BCE, which one particular site I'll come to soon will illustrate perfectly. Now a caveat. Today's Pylos, i.e. the seaside town marked on modern maps, is not quite the Pylos the ancients would have been referring to. Rather, the ancient Pylos was a kingdom spanning an area roughly a 15 km radius, particularly to the north, from the modern town. The site most commonly referred to as Pylos by the ancient authors lies on the Corufacion Acrotirion, the Corufacion Cape, about 4 miles northwest of the modern town. This makes sense when you consider its elevated high ground and convenient proximity to the sea. It would likely have been the Pylian kingdom's port, and possibly even its acropolis. Other sites contend for the kingdom's capital, however, with a number of Bronze Age city ruins scattered across this part of Mycenae. To put those eager Iliad fans at ease, though, we'll start with a short story to explain the name of the most famous one. Once upon a time, there was a king of Pylos named Nelius, who had 14 children. He got on the wrong side of the walking embodiment of main character syndrome, Heracles, who decided to get his revenge on the king and all his sons except the youngest, who had shown him kindness. Heracles invaded Pylos, and on then Ilia Kaitus Paidas autu Horis Nestoros se pectine, slew Nelius and all his sons, except for Nestor. That's right, Nestor, wise in war and oldest of the Achaeans at Troy, was once in fact a child. Nestor went on to prove himself a great king and warrior, defending his broken kingdom against the people of Elis to the north. It was he himself that personally struck down Amarinkeus, the Elian commander. Amarinkeus' funeral games marked a truce between Elis and Pylos, with athletes from both sides contending, and Nestor later recounts that during these games, Back then, no man was my equal, neither Elian nor Pylian nor brave Aetolian. He says he dominated the boxing, wrestling, running, spear throwing, and only came second in the chariot race because the opponents cheated. And he was later blessed by Apollo himself, who gave him the lifespan of three men. So it's no surprise then that it was the name of this mighty king of Pylos that went to a certain Mycenaean palace found in the region just north of the modern town. The Palace of Nestor, best preserved of all discovered Bronze Age ruins in the Minoan style. I should say though, there's no evidence to suggest that Nestor himself actually lived there, it's just a nice honorific to the beloved old mythical hero. Right then, I guess now would be as good a time as any to shift our focus to these miraculous ruins and look at the veritable treasure trove of findings Pylos has presented us from the last few millennia. As I said earlier, we know Pylos has been inhabited a long time, exemplified by the so-called Tomb of the Griffin Warrior, 
Found in an olive grove by the site of Nestor's palace, it contains the remains of a three and a half thousand year old ruler, or Wanax, as written there in my Canaan Linear B. He was found with a gold-hilted sword and a gold-hilted dagger, a hoard of metal cups and pitchers, jewellery, more weapons, more jewellery, and an ivory plaque of a griffin. He was clearly an incredibly powerful ruler for the time, which was towards the start of the Mycenaean period, known as the Shaft Grave Era, for the type of elite burial exemplified here. His tomb in fact predates the palace, and some have suggested he would have been one of the early rulers bringing Minoan culture to the mainland and heralding the Mycenaean Golden Age. We don't know his name, but from the 1004 plus Linear B tablets recovered from Pylos, we do know other rulers such as Ekeriawo, who commanded large armies, fleets, and a prospering kingdom. Other tablets found confirm trade with other kingdoms, including Crete, showcasing the levels of economic advancement of this age. Although its significance waned after the Mycenaean period, Pylos played a key role in the Peloponnesian War, and was the site of a significant victory for Athens over Sparta on the island of Sphacteria. The way in which Athens was able to trap the Spartans after a naval battle on the island is a great testament to the strategic benefits the region would have given its previous inhabitants. Later, the medieval age saw the addition to Pylos, then called Navarino, of two great castles which we can still visit. The site has since seen prolonged conflict under the Franks, during the Crusades, under the Ottomans, and during the Greek War of Independence. I for one though am pleased it has become the town it is now, a beautiful and peaceful spot by the sea which any adventurer to Greece should aim to visit. Good people, good food, good views. What more can you ask for? <laughs>